Keep in mind, you're going to see a lot of wrestling off of takedowns that end up in a lot of scrambles, okay? And, and you may, at times, not understand why somebody did not score the points, okay? Remember, in college wrestling, you have to have total control before points are awarded. So you're going to see a lot of wrestling over the last 10 years. Wrestling has become very scrambles. The guys, uh, uh, what we call scrambling wrestling. Guys don't give up the takedown. They're dropping on ankles. They're rolling. They're doing a lot of different things to try to avoid getting taken down. So just keep in mind, if Ethan is hitting a double leg, slide off, grab an ankle. He slides off, grab an ankle. You would think that the top man is in control. Okay? But you're going to notice a lot of times that the points are not awarded because he's not in control. He's got to have full control, meaning that this guy can no longer score points. Okay? And that's what we call control from a takedown. Okay? This would not be two. You're going to see guys roll and go ahead and roll okay? and wrestle from here. Okay? In the meantime, there is no points scored. The only time those points are scored is when, come on up, Ethan, come through. We drive through. Now, control, meaning that this, the defensive wrestler or the, the, his opponent no longer has, he has lost control of the situation and the points are awarded. So scrambles are, are hard to explain to the public, okay, because so many different situations can occur off of a takedown that, that can be hard to, to understand, but just keep in mind, you'll know when the points are awarded, meaning that the top man took control in the takedown. There's what we call stall calls and stall calls are when the official determines that one athlete is not competing, um, is not aggressive and he's uh, avoiding contact or avoiding wrestling. Uh, you'll see it on their feet. You'll see one wrestler backing up, okay, back up, back up. Chris is putting pressure on, he's backing up and he's avoiding competition. He's avoiding wrestling. Now, you'll see the official raise up in his hand uh, a warning call, which is a stall call, and each athlete has two of those before a point is awarded. And you're going to see this occasionally. Now, that, that doesn't just happen on the feet. It can also happen down. If Ethan's down, okay, when the whistle blows here, okay, get in the referee's position. When the whistle blows here and Ethan just balls up, go, balls up, he's not trying. Maybe he's avoiding getting turned. Maybe he's avoided trying to give up back exposure to the top man. So he's avoiding wrestling by dropping his head or by not being competitive underneath and trying to get an escape or a reversal. You can see the official warning, bottom man, okay? Keep in mind, other ways of scoring points with warnings. If you get two warnings and the third one comes, there's a penalty point of one point. Normally you won't see this until the end of matches. Normally you're not going to see a wrestler get two warning calls in the first period. You might see him get one in the first, one in the second, and maybe his third, his third one will come in the third period. Um, hopefully you don't see cowboy wrestlers uh, not competing. Okay? Um, keep in mind, on top, it's the same scenario. Let's say that Chris breaks this guy down in a chop, okay, and he just stays in that position. He's got a wrist and he's not moving. He's just staying right there trying to keep this guy down, maybe trying to build his riding time to get that point at the end of the period, okay. If Chris is not moving and is not, the rules state that the top man has to work for the pin, okay. It does not say that the top man has to work to try to ride this guy, okay. So with the, with the rules being you have to work for the pin, Chris has to maintain the aggressive attitude that I've got to work to try to turn this guy over. Okay? Now, you're going to see most matches where it's a struggle just holding the guy down. We can't even think about turning this guy. Okay? There's a difference. Both guys are working to try to, accomplish one, uh, try to accomplish the same thing, scoring points. Chris holding the guy down, trying to build the riding time. Okay, Ethan trying to get an escape. Okay, so even though the rules say that you must work to turn, most cases is this guy is going to be working very hard just to keep him down. But he cannot stop wrestling like this. He's controlled the wrist here. Ethan, there's nowhere for him to go. He's just squeezing there and not moving. Same way with you're going to see legs, what we call leg wrestlers. Jump up. 
He'll put a leg on here, okay? And it's very difficult to get out of. And he's just sitting there. He's not really working to turn the guy. He's not really working to score the guy. Boom! They'll hit him with Stalin. When, when you think about it, it's pretty tough, like I said before, to take a man and break him down and put a leg on. Okay? Very tough to do. All right? And then when we get here, it's still his responsibility to make sure he works for the turn. If not, and he's staying in that position, what we call parallel here, and not working for the exposure, bam, they'll hit that top man. Okay? As long as he's working hard. Now, keep in mind, it's going to be hard for him to turn him. Okay? But he's got to be looking like and, and working his tail off for that back exposure. Let's talk about potentially dangerous. Very important part of wrestling because you find that uh, most of these situations when potentially dangerous is called is when we're almost ready to score. And it can be a very frustrating thing for a coach when potentially dangerous is called. But we need to keep in mind a very physical sport wrestling is. Very dangerous at times. Okay, um, And there, there's times when potentially dangerous needs to be called. A, a very popular area over the years has been a swing single, just a single leg. Guy gets in on a single leg, we get this knee turned out. Okay, Now, it's his job, uh, the official's job, to determine did, the, did this wrestler put himself there or did this wrestler, offensive wrestler put the defensive wrestler there. A lot of times a wrestler put himself in potentially dangerous hoping to get that call. So you're going to notice that a lot, of, a lot of scoring opportunities here are very questionable when potentially dangerous comes. But we cannot pull this knee out. This is a very popular pos uh, position. Most officials let this go now. They let the wrestling continue. But when it gets real dangerous and the official is not real sure about injury, he will blow the whistle, stop it, and they'll end up back on their feet if they started in the neutral position, in the takedown position. Okay? Another area, uh, um, uh, Chris Pendleton takes a double leg shot and lifts the guy in his air. Go ahead and stand up. Anytime you bring a guy out of the air, it is his responsibility to take him back to the mat safely. Okay? We cannot drive this guy's head in the mat. We cannot slam him down to the mat. We've got to make sure that we take him down. It is the responsibility of the offensive man to take him back to the mat safely. So Chris is going to double leg him. He's not going to just throw him down. He's going to take him back to the mat and score his takedown and his two points. Okay. So with potentially dangerous, just keep in mind, you're going to see a lot of scenarios. Uh, and throughout watching dual meets this year, you're going to see some, a lot of scenarios at very critical times maybe that potentially dangerous is called. Another word you need to remember is stalemate. A stalemate is when two athletes are in a position where neither can gain control and the, whistle, and, and the action stops. We, a wrestling match in the official's job is to keep the action going. Okay? So when we end up in stalemates, the stalemate's called a lot from takedowns, from top position, really from everywhere. But it's when one wrestler is not gaining control over the other. Here's a typical stalemate situation. A double leg, get in the crotch, lay to your hip, okay? And he's stuck here. They're both stuck here, okay? No points are awarded. No action's going on. Three seconds, if there's not anything going on, boom, the action stops, stalemate, and they go back to where they originally started, which these two started on their feet, on the neutral position, no points awarded. Same way with here. Uh, legs in. Okay, two legs in, okay, nothing's happening, the top man's not, not really working. So that official has to make a determination of he could be working, okay, if he's working, it's not a stall call because he's working for the fall, okay. He's given him five, maybe ten seconds to try to turn his opponent over, he hasn't turned him over. So the action has really stopped even though they're still working. So it's real important that... Uh, a leg guy or a guy on top is continuing action, and if he wants to avoid the stalemate, okay, he really needs to peel the legs off and, and let him build up and start again. Okay? Now, remember, back with the legs on, stalemate can be that they're both working. He's trying to turn him, turn him, okay? and I've given him about 10 seconds, 
let's get the action going. Stop the match stalemate, which drives me nuts when a guy's broken down and we have two legs in. Okay, we should never stalemate this, but you see it often. It's a stalemate. They restart in the position they started with, okay, which that would be Ethan down. He got taken down, or it could have been from start from referee's position, and the whistle blows.